was for another another TV show. That was nice when you hosted your count, yeah, yeah. your peers. Yeah, you know I mean, I think it's just um, timing for me. Nothing else. I love that part of me. I love to sit down and just talk. I kind of feel like you you got you, you got bored or you get bored easily, and you're like, no, I'm I'm off that now. No. I don't think that's the issue. For me, it's timing, mm. but it's also what am I talking about? Like, what am I telling them? Mm. Yeah. So I want to be in the right space and have something important to tell them, something special to tell them, and then I'll share it. But sometimes when I get overwhelmed with other things, work, studio, motherhood, motherhood, Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, put that in uh, capital Quotes. letters. Mm -hmm. Usually those things take me away and suddenly I can't get the time to do the content. Mm -hmm. But it's something I love to do. It's something I love to do because it reminds me of the days when I used to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, just turn the mic and talk to people. So hopefully I'll get to have more time to do that because I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And people love you for, you know, <clears throat> that other side of you. You know, you being uh, one of those people that moves on their time. Yeah. Which is also something really important to move on your time. Mm. Not moving when people say move. Exactly. You know. It, it, it takes, it takes um, <laughs> a lot of courage, though. Mm. Yeah. Because many times you feel the pressure mm. to do what people want you to do, mm. you know. Mm. But um, mm. Mm. you have to know what you want. Mm. You have to have focus. Mm. You have to have some kind of plan for your own life. Mm. Um, you can't just be doing things because someone says, do this, or we want right. this, or we want that. Who are you? What do you want? Right. You know, it's so important to be in touch with yourself and know what it is you want to do in that particular moment, what speaks to you in that moment. Mm. And so... The time I was doing um, that content during the lockdown, mm. I was spending a lot of time by myself mm. and I had a lot to share. Now I've been busy, but when I get time again, I'll get back to it. Yeah. And that's the thing I like about YouTube. Yeah. So Nobody the... says you must, you know, post a, uh, an episode every week. It's your time. You do it when you have the time. Yeah. Consistency would be better, but you know <laughs> yeah mm. Mm. speaking of youtube mm. uh could you by any chance i'm going to give you three guesses okay any chance you know what is your most viewed song on youtube uh, that's interesting because i've never cared to find out mm. my most viewed song mm. which one is it no i told you i'm going to give you three chances so you can... No. 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 Liang. No. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. One left. Yeah. Wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Kaliwa Tanya. No. Your most viewed song on YouTube is Usi and Dembali with 8.2 million views. Wow. <laughs> Didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> yes, huh? But isn't that interesting? Like, yeah. I never check those things. I just don't. I also just found out that start today when I was going through, like, a little prep things. and shit. I should go back and uh, start checking my numbers. Yeah. yeah. But I kind of would understand that. Yes. Because of the language that you used. It's uh, Swahili. Yeah, that's yes. like four East African countries use that. Yes, yes. It, and, and it was a big song, really. Mm. Let's, um, it was a big song across the region. Mm. So it's kind of understandable that it has mm. the most numbers on my channel. Mm. Mm. Any memories of performing that song, like maybe anywhere outside of Uganda? Yes. The last time I performed it in Tanzania, we were together. Mm. And the entire place was singing. I'd stopped singing. And they were singing the song, you know. Mm. It clearly was um, an East African anthem. Um, 
it's sad that we never got to perform it with Bushoke at all. Yeah. You know, because I guess we live in different countries, mm. different schedules, and at that time Bushoke was also very active. Mm. Yeah. But I can imagine, I'm sure he also performs it, you know, yeah. when he's doing his stuff. But yeah, that's the last time I performed it. No, no, no. At the concert, Serena was the last time I performed yeah. it. Yeah. One of those bangers, like yeah. Ugandans who don't feel Swahili, but like when that comes on, yes, it's just a handful of you guys who can sing Timeless. a foreign language in Uganda yes. and pull it off to get Ugandan and sing that. Exactly. You know. It's a timeless song. Speaking of uh, it's, it being an East African anthem, yeah. uh, most of the times when I'm at these um, government events, <clears throat> your voice plays when they're playing the East African anthem. How did that come to the happen? The Ugandan anthem. No, the East African. Even the Ugandan. <laughs> yeah, even the yes, even the Ugandan. Yeah, yeah. But they should have, they should call you and you redo it because the sound is really terrible. No, the no, the, the, the sound is terrible because of where they probably got it. Uh, so there's a yeah. clear Yeah, someone clear probably version. went and picked it up on the internet somewhere. Oh. But there is a very clear version. Steve Jane has it. So he owns the rights to that? Yes, he did that. He produced it. The, How did that the, happen, the Ugandan anthem. Yeah. The East African anthem, I did it with D. King, I believe. Mm. Yeah. So, Shout yeah, D. King. Steve, Steve has a, the, the, you know, a very good version. copy of that song. So DJs who are always playing... Mm. at these important government events. Look for Steve mm. Jean. Yeah, look for and Steve. And he should yeah. give you a clear copy of her. And I'd call her to because copy. Steve is also, I think that's how, that's how you learn being on your time because Steve also moves his, uh, on his own time. <laughs> Steve is a boss. He's like... <laughs> He's a boss. He does things yeah. at his own time. Don't rush him. Yeah. Mm. So uh, still speaking of that, like how do these songs make you feel like Which your ones? vocals the, the being anthems? on the anthem, yeah. Ugandan anthem and East African anthem. I like the Swahili East African version. Thank you. So nice. Thank you. It's a blessing. Um, <clears throat> it's a blessing to be in such a position to be able to sing my, my uh, you know, the anthem for my country mm. and the anthem for my region. I'm a very patriotic person, by the yeah. way. Yeah, so my connection to my country is something I take very seriously mm -hmm. and um, anything that has to do with serving mm -hmm. as a citizen of this country I would do it with pleasure mm -hmm. you know it's like when I sang the song I am Ugandan mm -hmm. it was the love for my country you mm -hmm. know there was no check for it mm -hmm. there was nothing I didn't get paid for it but the love I have for my country like I wish I could stand on top of a mountain somewhere and sing to the entire continent or the world about my country, I would do that. I would do that with joy. Mm. I love my country. I love my country and I hope, I hope it shows when I'm singing those songs. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you, you sing with passion. Yeah. It comes from deep down no, no, your... No. It's, um, and you know how people say, ah, we have problems, this country is not perfect, we have issues, and yes, no country is perfect, mm. you know. Mm. Even Kenya has problems, mm. even Canada has problems, mm. even the US has problems. Choose what but to it's highlight. important to love who you are, mm. and to love where you come from, because that's the beginning of, mm. of, of who you are, mm. you know. Um, so, I love my country. There's so much beauty in this country. We just need to find it. We just need to see it, mm. you know. Even the, 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 what do you call that, the appreciation mm. of being Ugandan. Because mm. uh, I heard Melissa Malungi, yes. another person you met when she was a yeah. child, had on last <laughs> episode. Yeah. I was telling her about my experience at the, at the Nacho Valley uh, Displaced People's Camp. You go there. Mm and you get first hand to witness why you would never ever allow to witness your country go into turmoil yes and then get sent to another country yeah where they give you akaunga kayelo as food mm. you probably were mm. having mm. like mm. three mm. four mm. course mm. meals mm. yeah mm. 